Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Qui-Gon Jinn or Cad Bane, and like and subscribe for cooler beverages next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Elsa from Frozen, the most important character in the history of the building character series because it would not exist without her. The person who introduced me to Dungeons and Dragons went to the same college I did for an animation degree specifically because of how gorgeous the movie Frozen is. So if Elsa doesn't make a majestic ice castle while busting out a serious earworm, your favorite fictional characters would never be built by your favorite barbarian. Really? I probably should have made Elsa first. Whoop. Well, it's cold, 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 cold inside. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, ice is cool, figuratively and literally. But if you think we're just going to get ice spells like the Iceman build, you weren't paying attention to Frozen. Elsa can create life and destroy it. Specifically, a dinky snowman that's fun in small doses and a massive monster that I think is actually more endearing. Kindly yet dim-witted giants are the best. Yours is a big marshmallow. Finally, what's the point of being an ice queen without an ice castle? Yeah, Iceman doesn't make a castle. He shares a dorm room with Cyclops. I think Elsa made the right move there. For stats, we're going to be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Charisma will be number one. You can bust out a serious ballad and intimidate people so thoroughly it ruins your life. Constitution next, most of the cold damage spells are constitution saves, and from what I know, the cold never bothered you. Anyway, wisdom after that. Following weird voices and lights requires a bit of perceptive ability. Follow that up with dexterity, you don't wear a heavy coat, it wouldn't be as cool as a gossamer gown. Must get cold, but again, doesn't bother you. Strength is a bit low. I think you still have servants, even if you don't, you can make some to do the heavy lifting. We're dumping intelligence though. Your knowledge of your power is terrible. Your parents learned, don't be afraid of your powers from the trolls, then locked you in your room and died at sea. Failing Arcana checks is the driving narrative force of the first Frozen movie. Elsa is a human, born from a magical mother, but that doesn't change your race. It's just the definition of the sorcerer class. Spoilers. Grab the elemental adept feat to ignore resistance to cold damage with the spells you cast, and you can treat ones as twos when you cast a spell that deals cold damage to get a little extra icy. Bump your charisma and wisdom with your two free points, take perception for your skill of choice, and build your own background for performance and sleight of hand. Take the noble feat feature, position of privilege, but we can get persuasion from our starting class, and failed history checks are the driving narrative force of Frozen 2. Excited for Frozen 3, where Kristoff whiffs an investigation check and is framed for murder. We'll kick things off as a sorcerer to get some basic ice stuff right away. You can also grab two skills from the sorcerer list, like persuasion and intimidation. If you can't convince people to leave you alone, scare them away with magic. I'm thinking with spells like Ray of Frost, a ranged spell attack that deals 1d8 cold damage and slows a creature's movement speed by 10 feet. Make sure you don't accidentally hit your sister with it, that's enough to freeze a kid's heart. Frostbite forces a constitution saving throw on a creature, dealing a d6 of cold damage to those that fail, and giving them disadvantage on their next weapon attack. It's offense with a little bit of defense as well. Shape Water lets you do a bunch of little flavor things with water, changing its color or direction or freezing it. Ice is just water, Elsa would do great in the Water Tribe. Finally, Minor Illusion makes some tiny visual illusions that can fit in a 5 foot cube, or an audible illusion that can be as loud as a scream. You need some backing music when you're singing in the mountains. For your first level spells, Ice Knife is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 piercing damage on a hit and forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures within 5 feet of the creature attacked, dealing 2d6 cold damage to those that fail. Even if you don't plan on killing someone with an icicle, it can be useful to let people know that you can kill someone with an icicle. Shield will make a nice ice shield, adding 5 to your AC as a reaction so you don't have to put on heavy armor. You can just wear a nice blue dress. That's even easier with dragon scales, which I guess we have if we use the Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer for Draconic Resilience, and AC equal to 13, plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor. It's a little weird, but we don't have elemental specific sorcerers other than Storm at the moment, so yeah. Ice. Don't worry though, we're multi-classing right away over to Bard for an additional skill like survival to track down weird voices in the forest. For your first level spells, detect magic might also be good for that, letting you sense magical auras and determine the type of magic causing them. Probably evocation or illusion, I would guess? Disguise self lets you change your appearance for an hour. That can be your face, but more importantly, it can be your clothing. It's easier to do a show-stopping musical number after a few costume changes. Maybe not easier, more fun. Longstrider adds 10 feet to a creature's movement speed, letting 
you skate around even when you're not in an ice rink. Everywhere you go is an ice rink. Father Fall prevents up to five falling creatures as a reaction. Now you can save Anna, Kristoff, Sven, Oli, and Lena with some cushiony snow. If anyone likes those Norwegian jokes, good for you, I guess. You're from the Midwest, I suppose. How's the Midwest treating you right now? Treating me okay. You also get cantrips like Prestidigitation to do small flavor stuff. Cooling beverages and making little trinkets are the ones I'm most into for Elsa. Mending puts two pieces of something back together or fixes a crack in something with a little ice patch. The main draw of the Bard class is Bardic Inspiration, letting you give allies a d6 to add to ability checks, saving throws, or attack rolls, helping those commoners get a little bit better at going on an epic adventure, even when you're kind of the only one with powers. To be fair, you have a lot of powers. Second level Bards get Song of Rest, letting allies recover an extra d6 on short rests if they have any stress from their day. This should help them let it go. You're also a jack of all trades, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to skill checks you're not proficient with. And you can learn another spell, like Heroism, making a creature immune to frightening, and they get temporary HP equal to your charisma modifier at the start of each turn, powering them up with the power of sisterly love. Or like sisters, boyfriends, fondness? Kristoff and Elsa don't spend a lot of time together. Third level bards get expertise in two skills, doubling your proficiency bonus with them. Performance and intimidation should be the best picks to sing your heart out and make people think you'll freeze their heart out. You also get second level spells. Hold person lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a humanoid, paralyzing them if they fail, locking them down in some ice. Rhymes Binding Ice is a new spell that does that a little more literally, but it isn't on the bard list, and we need to use the bard list for some stuff that's coming later. Honestly, Elsa doesn't get all that offensive with her eyes. The most impressive stuff she does is utility and creating sentient life. Speaking of creation, the College of Creation Bard will get to do a performance of creation, making an object of medium or smaller that's worth less than 20 times your bard level once per long rest. At the 6th level, it can be large. At the 14th level, it can be huge. If we're going that far into bard, maybe we will. Who knows? Your inspiration die also gets some more power with a note of potential. So when a creature uses it on an ability check, they get to roll the inspiration die with advantage. If they use it on a saving throw, they get temporary HP equal to the roll plus your charisma modifier. And if they use it for an attack roll, they can force a constitution saving throw on a creature within five feet of them, dealing the bardic inspiration die in thunder damage. Music can be very powerful, especially when sung by the legendary Adele does... Fourth level bards get an ability score improvement. Charisma is obviously the most important thing for you. Singing and ice powers are both based on how strong your pipes are. For this level spell, enhance ability gives a creature advantage on ability checks of a certain type. If you choose strength, their carrying capacity is doubled. If you choose dexterity, they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less. And if you choose constitution, they'll also get 2d6 temporary HP. It's another form of inspiration to spread to your buddies. Fifth level bards get a font of inspiration. So now your inspiration die will recover on short rests and it will become a d8 for more inspiring songs. You can also learn third level spells like slow forcing a wisdom saving throw on up to six creatures in a 40 foot cube failing at their movement speed is halved negative two to their ac and dexterity saving throws they can only make one attack or cast one spell per turn and if they want to cast a spell you roll a d20 on an 11 or higher that spell comes out next round it's hard to work in the winter this makes a 40 foot cube of winter sixth level creation bards can make an animating performance turning an object within 30 feet of you into a construct of large or smaller the stats are in tasha's cauldron of everything but some highlights you can man it with your bonus action or a bonus action you're using to distribute some inspiration and it can make people dance to go 10 feet faster or 10 feet slower. Who doesn't want to dance when Olaf sings his little song? For this level spell, Glyph of Warding creates a small trap to defend your castle. You can store spells of third level or lower to activate upon a set condition or you can make it force a dexterity saving throw on creatures within 20 feet of it, dealing 5d8 acid cold, fire cold, lightning cold, thunder, or even cold damage and maybe go with cold damage to keep the visitors out. You need some me time. Seventh level bards can learn fourth level spells locate creature lets you find a creature of a vague type or specific nature helping you track down those magical spirits to figure out your lore hopefully also definitely recommend leaving your magical powers vague for your dm to determine the source of and your character has to like discover it over the course of an adventure it's really fun a level bards get another ability score improvement letting you cap off your charisma modifier for a better oaf from animating performance and a better marshmallow in a little bit when we get there trust me it's going to be amazing freedom of movement lets you ignore difficult terrain to run through the snow without worries and break out of non-magical shackles with five feet of movement just get the metal really cold should shatter. Ninth level bards get fifth level spells. Greater restoration lets you remove curses, reductions of ability scores or total HP, and charming or petrification, letting you fix a frozen heart with the power 
of sisterly love. Tenth level bards get a lot of pieces of the Elsa puzzle, some of which might seem a little weird right now, but they're going to make sense later, I promise. You get expertise in two more skills. Perception and survival will help you make your way through a blizzard without getting lost. Your inspiration die also bumps up to a d10, and you get magical secrets, two spells you can cast from any spell list in the game. Ice Storm forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder, dealing 4d6 cold damage and 2d8 bludgeoning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Here's where things get like a little weird. Infernal Calling summons a devil of challenge rating 6 or lower that hates you and everyone else. Hangs out for an hour depending on your concentration. I think I got my scripts mixed up. This doesn't make sense. 11th level bards get 6 level spells. Find the path lets you find the most direct route to a destination. Not necessarily the safest though. You may need to try and freeze some waves. That's not going to be easy. 12th level bards get another ability score improvement. Go for your constitution to insulate in an ice castle. That honestly sounds like a dream come true to me. I am always warm. 13th level bards can learn 7 7th level spells, but I don't really want any. So instead, grab guards and wards from the 6th level to keep people out of your castle, or at least make them unhappier inside. This fills corridors with fogs, stairs with webs, and the doors are magically locked. Do you ever get the vibe that someone doesn't want you in their home? I'm kind of surprised the glyph of warding out front, shooting icicles that everyone didn't tip them off. 14th level bards get another big piece of the Elsa puzzle. I'm not joking, she's one of the hardest characters I've had to build. As a creation bard, you now get creative crescendo to make a number of objects with a performance of creation equal to your charisma modifier and you're no longer restricted to their cost which means casting infernal calling isn't expensive anymore you also get two more magical secrets magic circle creates a 20 foot radius cylinder that keeps out celestials fiends fate and undead creatures outside can't charm possess or frighten the creatures inside and they'll have disadvantage on attacks against the creatures inside as well but flipping it inside out would trap a creature inside for an hour planar binding binds a creature to your service from another plane for 24 hours if they fail a charisma saving throw at the end of your hour long casting time. If you upcast it to sixth level, you control them for 10 days, 30 days with a seventh level spell slot, 180 days with an eighth level spell slot, and a whole year with a ninth level spell slot. The only issue is that the spell component is really expensive, except you can make spell components with a performance of creation and are no longer bound by the cost. Now, Elsa can get another devil under her control every day to amass the armies of hell on earth without cost. It's a very Elsa move. What am I doing? 15th level bards can learn 8th level spells like Glibness, setting your lowest charisma check to 15 for an hour, followed by your modifiers. Now, you're never gonna drop a note, other than a note of potential, which will be better because your bardic inspiration die is a d12. 16th level bards get an ability score improvement, keep working on your constitution, more help will keep you alive to be everyone's favorite princess, if they like the cold. I like the cold. 17th level bards can learn 9th level spells, so we can finally make those devils make sense with the spell true polymorph, letting you change one creature into to another creature of challenge rating equal to their current challenge rating. Summon an 8th level devil by upcasting Infernal Calling, bind it to your service, then turn it into a frost giant, and now we have Marshmallow. Technically, you could make a new Marshmallow every day and have an army of giants. That would be pretty rad. Your bardic inspiration die also bumps up to a d12 here. 18th level bards get two more magical secrets. If you want to make a great castle really quickly, Mighty Fortress creates a castle that fits in a 120 foot square on the ground it's furnished it's awesome it's really long to explain if you need to make a castle in one minute it requires a verbal component so you better start singing it also costs a diamond worth 500 gold pieces so it would be nice if you could i don't know make those at will you can make those at will control weather lets you change the weather within five miles of you so you can plunge your castle town into an eternal winter if you have a bad day our capstone is the 19th level of bard for an ability score improvement cap off your constitution to maximize your hp your cold resistance and your concentration it's pretty cool ice cold even now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first you can create an army of over 300 frost giants as a year goes on that's pretty good then you can build yourself a castle and ward it up to stop anyone from getting close to you finally you're good at singing that's always fun greatness is after someone gets past your army of giants and through your impenetrable castle defenses you don't have a lot of direct damage options you're also lacking in athletics or acrobatics so you could get shoved around provided anyone can make it through the army of giants finally it takes a while to raise an army of new life that you can create in one day. Elsa's a god. Fear her. Run from her. Or just be nice to her because she's a nice lady who just wants people to not be afraid of her. Just try to keep your people happy. I could see you being the big bad in an earlier draft. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Qui-Gon Jinn or Cad Bane and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.